Hey everybody, Haku here with a video discussing all the premieres I watched from the winter 2021 anime season. Uh, now before I get into each of them individually, I'll tell you all 14 of the shows that I watched the premiere to, and uh, down at the bottom I'll put some uh, timestamps, that way you can jump to them um, if there are certain ones you want to jump to. Uh, just to see the ones that you've also watched, but I'm going to keep this pretty spoiler free and I'm going to give my thoughts so that, you know, they can be kind of suggestions. If you want to check this series out based on my thoughts on it, then, you know, that'd be great. Um, but I'm going to watch all 14 of these unless I drop a couple here and there. I'm going to at least try to watch all 14 of these. Who knows if I'll drop some mid-season or not. But then next season, while I'm watching like 12 to 16 of next season shows, I'll review these week to week. So doing this this way, I can watch... 12 to 16 shows, I can give you a review of each of them next season instead of just watching like three shows tops and doing weekly episodic reviews on them. Uh, but I just wanted to make this video just to give you all my initial first thoughts after seeing only the first episode of each of them. Uh, only the first episode. So yeah, real quick before I get into these, I'm going to be talking about uh, Idly Pride. Tenchi Sozo Design Boo or Heaven's Design Team. Hold on. I have all my notes here. Let me grab these. Uh, Hortensia Saga, Geki Doll, Mushoku Tensei, Isekai Tara Honkidasu or Jobless Reincarnation. Um, Kumodeska Nanika or I'm a Spider So What. D4 DJ First Mix, uh, Tensei Shitara Slime Dot uh, Season 2 Part 1. I reviewed all the episodes of Season 1 when it was coming out. Um, Urasekai Picnic, or Other Side Picnic, Yakusoku no Neverland, or The Promised Neverland Season 2, and for that I've read all of the manga here on the channel and reviewed all of Episode 1, I think, again. Um, Yuru Camp Season 2, I don't know if I reviewed the first season of that or not. I don't remember. I definitely watched the first season, obviously. Uh, Skate the Infinity, Kemono Jihen, and Wonder Egg Priority. Uh, I'm going to go through each of them and talk about them sort of a little slightly more in depth. Again, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I'm going to talk about each of them once, one at a time from, I liked all of them, but from what I thought was the least good to the most good is the order that I'll go in. But uh, yeah, you'll see along the bottom uh, of the video if you scroll down or whatever, um, or like move the mouse down, you know what I mean. Uh, there'll be timestamps for all the different ones if you want to jump around, but yeah, I would suggest just sticking around for my thoughts on all of them, because I'm going to try to keep it short, spoiler free, and just give you my general impression uh, going into this season. But honestly, I think it's a, a hell of a stacked season, because like I said, all of these, I think 12 of the 14 were well and above what I was used to back when I was in the habit of watching seasonal in like 2017 and 2018 before I fell out of it somewhere along the way in 2019. Um, I think honestly, like honestly, at least 12 of these had really, really, really good quality just in the, um, just in the first episode. So I don't know if quality will drop on any of them later on, but usually, in my opinion, from what I've noticed, it's more likely that you go into a show when you're not that into the first episode, but then it builds over time, then it has a great first episode and then can't follow up on that. That, to me, is a lot less likely. Uh, but I liked all 14, so either way, I'll go ahead and jump into Idly Pride first. So first up, kind of 14th place, I'll talk about Idly Pride. Now, I definitely didn't think it was a bad show at all. Like I said, I liked all 14 of these. This was the only one out of all 14, though, where, like, occasionally, every once in a while, I would, like, you know, when you do the little move, you jiggle the mouse around, and you're like, okay, where am I at? How much of this episode is left? Uh, this was the only out of these 14 that I did that for, so it was the only one that was a little on the duller side. But uh, I'm not going to drop it yet. I'm going to keep giving it a chance, because just in the first episode, there's this thing that I don't want to spoil... But going forward through the season, it could end up being something really unique and different and interesting. So I definitely want to still give it a chance, 
but I'm not sure how it'll continue on and follow up from this first episode. Um, generally, I thought out of all of these, it was the least like, oh wow, this is something different that I have be or haven't seen before. It was a kind of the most generic, even though it, it did tell a really good story in the first episode. Um, it was just, I think, the weakest of the ones, and the m one I was most like, uh, I could drop this if it doesn't really uh, keep up with the things it did do well. So, yeah, this I think is the weakest of them for me, the most, uh, the most generic, but I do think it could be really interesting, so I'm not going to drop it yet, because like I said, episode one told a good story, and there is one certain thing in episode one that I think moving forward could be a really interesting plot point, depending on how much they stick with it. So, uh, yeah, jumping into 13th now. The next one to talk about is Tenchi Sozo Design Boo, or Heaven's Design Team. It is about a group of angels tasked by God to create the animals and design all them and stuff. It is really fun and colorful. I think, though, that it's the only other one out of the 14. Like I said, 12 I thought were really great, but it was the only other one where, like, the production quality wasn't really anything special. It was definitely, definitely average at best. And I don't know, maybe I think they played it, they played it a little bit too clean, a little bit too straight, where they could just go out and do some, like, really, really crazy wild stuff. And I kind of want them to do that in future episodes, because I do think it was a bit tame. But there were a lot of really neat, interesting characters introduced in the first episode that I think if we focus on some more of those characters later on, I could, uh, I could really get into it. But yeah, it just felt like the the idea was really, really great. But when it came to the execution, it was good. It it was good, but they just I don't know. They played a little bit, a little bit too safe and a little bit too straight. I think maybe uh, is a criticism I could give. But yeah, after after those two, all twelve of the rest go from, I thought that Idly Pride and Heaven's Design Team were both good. I think the other 12 were all really pretty great. The 12th is Hortensia Saga, which I thought actually turned out to be a lot better than I expected it to be. I've seen a lot of the sort of fantasy style anime that are just sort of really, really meh production quality, but this, the production quality was a lot more solid than I thought it would be. The story, I think, was definitely a lot better than I thought it would be as well. The fights looked really nice, which again, isn't always the case with these kinds of shows. Um, so generally, I really, really liked it. Uh, the opening had me like, oh, like, is that a spoiler in the opening? Is that something important? And it had me like really hooked and interested in what's going to be uh, going on in the show. Um, there were a lot of characters in the opening, so I'm excited to develop the cast further and see what's up with these other characters. Again, there is a chance that, like with some shows, when they introduce just a bunch of characters, you're like, okay, they introduced too many and there's no way they're going to be able to properly develop them all. But with this, I think it could work. I don't know. I'm a little bit optimistic if they don't rush things, but it also seems like, I'm not sure what the source material is, it also seems like one of those kinds of shows that I could see potentially being rushed. Um, so, who knows? We'll see what happens. We'll see what we get. But I'm pretty optimistic after the first episode. It was definitely above my expectations. I think the 11th best one that I watched was Gekidal. And Gekidal, to me, after the first three minutes, I was like, A, this is seeming a bit generic, so I don't know if I'm really really going to be able to get into this one. But then by like eight minutes in, there was just this really well-built sense of mystery that had me like, okay, no, now I'm totally sucked into it. Uh, also, at the very, very beginning, they did this like roll call thing and like so many characters were a part of it where it was like I mentioned with Hortensia Saga where I was like, this is going to be one of those where they introduce all these characters and they cannot develop all of them. But the characters that we saw were actually pretty interesting. Again, they were part of me getting sucked into it. Uh, there was the character with the 
Kane, and I th again, I feel like that's something a little bit different for a character, and I really, really like that little bit of added diversity to the cast, as well as there seemed to be some sort of robot girl, and I think that could be really cool. But yeah, there's... It was almost your basic idol anime, but more about acting than being an idol. But there was also just this really, really cool sense of mystery about the world that it was set in that I would love to see developed further. Again, it was one of those where I immediately, I like first went in like with Hortensia Saga where I was like, this could just be meh, but it definitely, definitely did a lot better in my opinion than meh. Like I said, by like eight minutes, into the episode, I was pretty sucked into the world and the mystery and the characters and wondering what could possibly happen with this show this season. Um, so I thought it was pretty good. All right, the 10th best premiere, I think, was, hold on, we got ourselves a long title here. We got us a long name. Uh, Mushoku Tensei, it, or Isekai Itara Honkidasu, or Jobless Reincarnation. A bunch of people are saying that this is like the OG light novel isekai, which is, if so, it's strange. I wonder if the author just um, just had a thing where they're, they were like, with See You in Tower of God, I'm waiting for a really good anime deal before I agree to anything. Because it's weird with all the bazillion isekai anime that this hadn't gotten one yet, if that's the uh, case. But I thought it had really, really great production quality. Um, it's the OG, but I still can't like give it a pass for being a little bit generic in some ways. But there's one thing that I really, really loved about it, and that's that a lot of isekai start out with the character like, okay, I have this OP power or item or something, and now there's just, for the entire show, there's no conflict because the main character can't be beaten. Nothing can go wrong for them. I like that with this, the main character, their strength and their talent is something that they had to build up. And it's something that they're not OP just from episode one. It's like something they're going to have to keep building. Um, so I like that. I like that there's a build to it rather than just, okay, I'm reincarnated, now I'm OP. Uh, which is something that is just way, way, way too overdone. And some series can make it work really well, like, um, say, Slime, something we're going to talk about later. But most series, rather than it working out really well, it just kind of takes the air out of it because there's never any threat. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think that... I struggled with where to put it because I was like, it was actually really good. And like I said, the production quality was just gorgeous. But then there were so many other shows where I was like, oh, this show was amazing. Like, like I said, the season was so stacked that I was like, I got to put it in 10th because there are just so many other great shows. Um, but yeah, I really loved this one. So I don't want like its place being so low to make you think I didn't like it. It's just that the bar is really high this season. Next up, we've got ourselves another isekai, actually. Spider isekai rather than jobless isekai. Uh, Kumadesuka Nanika, or so, or so I'm a Spider, So What? I really, really loved it. I loved Kumiko and the voice actress doing an amazing, amazing job. I like the concept of the other classmates also being reincarnated. I think that's a cool twist on the whole isekai thing that could be really, really, really cool in the future. Uh, so yeah, I like that concept. I love Kumiko. Uh, mostly, I thought it was great. The ending song is fantastic. I'm so addicted to the ending. Um, the only one thing I would criticize, it wasn't that bad, but I didn't really like the CG animation that much. Now, I'm not one of those people who's going to just always complain about CG. Uh, I loved Kimono Friends despite its animation because the story quality was uh, just really, really good. I'm a huge fan of Beastars. It's my favorite manga, and I think Studio Orange does a wonderful job with the adaptation. And speaking of Studio Orange, Hoseki no Kuni is incredible looking. Um, so this is just one of those things. I think this is the same studio d that did the very much hated Berserk adaptation. Um... Again, it wasn't that bad to me. It wasn't that bad, but it was a little bit eh. There were just a few shots of Kumiko. Most of them were great, but there were a few where I was like, that's kind of a boring, very static shot. 
And then the frog didn't look all that great either to me. But again, I don't think it was that bad. Uh, I really, really liked it for the story though, and even if the CG is a little eh here and there, I can totally forgive that if it tells a really good story, obviously. But I thought it was super fun. I'm excited to watch more. Uh, just if to see more of Kumoko just being as mad as she is in the ending. I love that ending so much. My eighth favorite premiere was D4DJ First Mix. Now, this is one where you're really, really going to have to hear me out. Again, it's a um, 3D CG show. I thought it looked really nice. The music, though, the best part. Obviously, in a DJ show, that's what it should be. That's good. I really loved the opening to this. Um, it's really great. I, this is one of those where I think a lot of people will overlook it because it's CG. And um, also because it's on YouTube. You can legit go watch it right now on YouTube. And it's the only one of these that I watched where I'm going to be watching all of them one episode a week throughout this season. Um, but... This one's already on like episode 12 or something because it started like back at the end of October, beginning of November or something. Uh, but I'm going to be watching it one episode at a time along with the rest of them. But yeah, you can find it on YouTube. You can go watch the opening, I would say, at least. And then maybe that'll get you hooked on it. But watch episode one. I think this is one that a lot of people will overlook. But it's actually really, really good. Or at least I really, really like the first episode a lot. Uh, so yeah. It was fun, funny, and had great music, and I'm really excited to see, mostly just to watch it more to see, like, how good the music can be. Uh, so, yeah, gonna move on to the next one. Next, we've got Tensei Shita Slime Dot Again, or uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, season 2, part 1. Then we're gonna get a season off, and then we'll come back with part 2 after that in, like, July. Um, I loved this premiere second season or third season and so forth premieres are often not that great. Like, as a huge, huge Hero Academia fan, the season premieres are usually pretty weak. Because when an anime debuts a new season of an existing show, there's usually a lot of recap involved. But this, the recap was minimal, and aside from the recap, we got stuff done. There was important story stuff. There was really cool fighting and action scenes. The animation looked like a step up from last season. Um, there was some really good comedy bits, some good serious stuff. Like, I really have nothing but praise for how much the episode accomplished, how good what it accomplished was, and you know, how not boring it was, how not inundated with recap it was. Um, I did review all of the first season. I feel like during the first season when I was reviewing it week to week, I was kind of with this double-edged sword of people in the comments just constantly spoiling things like, oh, um, you're, you're just gonna learn about this later and this is what this means and stuff. And it wasn't people like trying to be mean or rude or spoil anything on purpose. They were just really excited about the series. So I didn't really like get too upset about it or anything because it is, I mean, it was annoying, but it was just people that are really excited about the series. And that tells me how good it can be to get people that excited about it. Um, so I think even now, now that I'm not reviewing episode to episode, and I'm going to be doing a review at the end of this first core, I think that I might end up enjoying it more watching it this way. Uh, but yeah, I seriously loved the first season. Uh, th there were a little bit of things that were hit and miss, but I generally loved it. And uh, I'm excited for this because, again, so far from the first episode, it seems like a bit of a step up uh, production-wise from the music to the animation to the pacing. To me, it felt like a bit of a step up from the first episode here. My sixth favorite of the 14 premieres I watched was Uda Sekai Picnic or Other Side Picnic. This one was really, really fun. Again, it was just so mysterious and trippy and weird, and I got so sucked into the mystery. I really want to watch to see where it goes, and 
the explanation for all of this, what it's all about. There were some certain things about it that I was like, this seems very, very Bloodborne-like. Were they inspired at all by Bloodborne? And then in the opening, there's that shot of something that looks like the Celestial Emissary. So I'm like, Celestial Emissary boss fight when? Um, yeah, I, I really liked this. There was a lot of mystery to it, and it seems like the kind of show that I could really, really, really get into. I don't think the production quality was bad. It was still definitely good, but it also seemed a little bit lower budget than some of the other shows I'm watching. But again, better than a lot of shows I've watched in the past, so definitely not bad. Uh, but the story had me sucked in. The mystery was really, really good here, and I liked the character so far. Plus, I'm pretty sure it's a shoujo eye, and if you know anything about me, you know your boy loves shoujo eye. Can't get enough of the Yuri. So, um, yeah. Or, I'm, I'm not even Yuri, that makes it sound sexual. I'm just, I'm a, the, the male version of, what is it, a Fujoshi or whatever? I love shoujo eye. I love, uh, shoujo eye romance shows. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I, I really like that aspect, even though that wasn't really presented in the first episode, if that's where this is heading. And as far as the mystery goes, I think it's awesome. I'm totally into the world of it. Uh, so yeah, gonna move on to my top five. My fifth favorite of these premieres was The Promised Neverland, Yakusoku no Neverland Season 2. Again, if you've been around the channel for a while, I've read all of the manga. I reviewed all of Season 1, so you know I'm a massive, massive fan of the series, and I thought it was really, really good. I'm excited about it. I want to do a whole discussion on the manga because I heard that the anime is changing some things from the manga. It's what I've heard. Don't know if that's true, but if so, I, I kind of welcome it if it's not too big of changes. I don't know. I feel like there are things that the anime could spice up that were maybe a little bit duller in the manga around this part. So... Yeah, I'm excited to see what's possible. I want to do more discussions on it. I really, really love the series. I think that it's a series that relies a lot on mystery. And so as somebody who's read the manga, a lot of that mystery isn't there as much for me. And that takes away a little bit of the impact when watching the anime. But it is still really good. Um, and I guess, I mean, that mystery could return if they decided to do just something anime original with it. But I don't know. I don't know how much I'm into that, because usually when anime go for an anime original story and ending, it it ends up not being that great, uh, usually at least. So I don't know. I think the things that were changed in the anime in Season 1 improved upon it, so if they're going to do that again for Season 2 and just change some small things here and there that improve upon it, I'm all here for it. Uh, but yeah, I really liked the first episode. I thought it was good in every way. Uh, the voice acting, the production quality as far as the music and the, um, and the voice, or wait, I said voice acting in the animation. I thought it was all great. So yeah, no problems. All good. I'm excited to see where it'll go because I know what's going to happen. And it'll be interesting to see how they adapt it and if, again, they can spice it up and make it better. But uh, yeah, and the pacing too is another thing that I'll be curious about. But uh, either way, moving on. Fourth was Yoru Camp Season 2's premiere, and I like, I I don't even know why I like it so much. If anybody can tell me why I love this show so much, I'd be happy to hear it. Because really, not much of anything happened, and yet at the same time, I never checked how far I was through the episode. I was like, completely transfixed, absorbed, the entire time. Despite, you know, I mean, it's just kind of chill, nothing's really happening, but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. They weren't going super deep into character development or plot or anything. They just sort of, I don't know, were there. They took you along on a journey and I was there for it every second. Uh, the production quality was great as before. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't go too all out with the comedy even. It's just, it's just good. It's, it, it doesn't do anything big or over the top, but it's, it's just good and I don't know why it is so good but it is just it's so addicting it's so good uh so yeah moving <laughs> moving into the top three now and like I said 14 and 13 the Tenchi Sozo Design Boo and um Idly Pride were good the rest were great 
but I think the top three stood in a class of their own. The top three to me were like really, really special. And I had a lot of trouble deciding what order to put the three of them in. So just know that to me, these three were like top of top tier. Third, I'm reluctantly putting Skate the Infinity. I didn't think anything would beat this episode when I watched it. The story and the style is just so out there and cool and crazy. The animation was gorgeous. The characters were amazing. I, le I legitimately loved the characters. Uh, the opening and the ending are both incredibly, incredibly good too. Like, everything about this amazing. Everything about this is like, you need to see it. It is a must watch. Like, out of all the 12 that I thought were great, these top three feel like must watches. And maybe even out of the three, there's just something so universal about the first episode of Skate the Infinity where I was like, even more than the other two, this might be like the must watch one to me. It's just that when I watched this episode, I thought it was great. Then Kemono Jihen came along and I was like, Personally, I think I liked the premiere for Skate the Infinity a little bit more, but Kemono Jihen made me more excited for Episode 2 than Skate the Infinity did. It made me more hyped to see the rest of the show, even though as one single episode away from the rest of the show, I think that Skate the Infinity was maybe a bit better. But yeah, loved everything about it. Like, trust me, this one is just seriously, seriously a must-watch. My second favorite premiere was Kemono Jihen, and it is like, it's so good. Everything I said about Skate the Infinity, the animation was like so great. I love this design. I, I love this design so much. Look at these adorable, I'm going to put a picture up and it's probably going to have the cast. Look at these adorable characters. I love them. Everything about this was incredible. It seriously had me shocked a few times where I was like, oh my god, did that really just happen? Oh my god, what does this mean? Like, I was legit shocked and reeling and trying to keep up. It was so, 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 so good. Um, like I said, I love the character designs and the art style. Everything about it was, again, basically perfection. I would say it's another must-watch. Uh, at least for me, it's right up my alley with the type of, it seems like it's going to be a kind of dark-ish shonen. I like the sort of animal people um, idea behind it. Basically everything to me about this was great. Uh, so yeah, like I said too when I was talking about Skate the Infinity, I think that Skate the Infinity may have had the better first episode if we're looking at just the first episode, but even that's arguable, and I go back and forth, and I did put this one above it, but I think that this episode also did more than Skate the Infinity's first episode at selling me for the rest of the show. Skate the Infinity loved the first episode. If it was just an OVA and there wasn't any more, I would just love that one episode. But this... Not only was it an incredible episode, but it was it made me like, I need to continue. I need to see more. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess that's it. I don't think there's much else to say, but um, I'm excited to see these characters grow. And especially, again, some of the designs, like, I, I love this art style. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Now to talk about my favorite of these. Number one for me was Wonder Egg Priority. Another of the three must-watches, like... I loved every single thing about it. The story was incredibly addicting. The character design and the world design were just absolutely incredible. The direction just just stood head and shoulders above anything. Uh, the animation, I think, looks really, really nice and cool. And it's just a little bit off, just a little bit different in the, in the uh, little 3D CG bits. But... It still looks gorgeous, and that little bit of offness really adds in to the story and its portrayal. Uh, so yeah, everything about it, I thought, again, basically perfection. No complaints whatsoever. Amazing in every way. Uh, it's another must-watch, along with Kimono Jihen and with Skate the Infinity. I thought it was incredible. It gets into some really deep and dark themes, but that has me, again, it did a great job, just like Kimono Jihen did, at selling me on the rest of the series, where now I am just hooked. I need to see what comes next. So, uh, yeah, I'll be watching 
all of these, all, how many did I say, all 14 of these, I don't know if I'll drop any, like the two at the bottom are the most droppable, but even then I don't have any plans on dropping them. Uh, and then once we get through this season, I will be, um, I'll be reviewing all of these as I watch next season shows. So yeah, loved all of these. Hope you enjoyed my thoughts and all of that on all of them. I uh, hope I could provide some insight or entertainment here. Uh, but yeah, that's where I'm going to end. Like, comment, and subscribe. We can talk in the comments. I'm always open to talk anywhere. If you want to follow on Twitter if you want, or uh, join the Discord server. It's free and open for anyone. Just ask and I can give you a link to that. Uh, I'm always open to try to talk here or on Twitter or on Discord. I always try to make myself open to everybody. Um, so yeah, want to talk about any of these? We can talk about them as the season's going on. We can talk about them every week on Discord or Twitter or whatever um, as I watch each episode. And then I'll review the season or the half season core or whatever when they're done. Um, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Twitter if you want to link to the Discord server. I already said all that. Um, if you want to help support the channel on Patreon, it really would... Uh, help. It's patreon.com slash the tubes or a link will be in the description. And I'm also doing voting right now where every other week I'll be doing like, I'll say here publicly, hey, what series do you want me to review this week? And then I'll do that one. And then the next week I'll do it on Patreon and then back again public for everyone, then on Patreon again, and just go back and forth so that uh, Patreons get a little bit of a thank you in that way of, uh, getting to decide when it comes to um, these polls every other week. Uh, but yeah, and then they're public, so you can just see those on the community tab here on YouTube. Uh, but this week, Fire Force 1, so I'll be doing that. Uh, but I also did a poll on Patreon this week, and Legend of Korra won that. So after I do Fire Force, I'll be doing Legend of Korra. And then after that, I'll have another poll up here on the... Uh, on the community tab for all you to decide what I'll do after that. Uh, so yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.